YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop as we get into part two of making this custom brake caliper bracket. If you watched the video last week, we made the prototype out of aluminum. Today's project, we need to make two of these out of some heat treated 4140 steel. So we're gonna go through and I'll just do a quick review of what the project is on the bench. We'll take a look at what we're making here. We've got a 3D printed plastic original prototype. We made one out of aluminum, now we're gonna move on to steel. I prepped some of the stock already. You saw maybe a little bit of that in the last video, but kind of do just a quick one, two minute catch up on what we've got going on here. And then we are gonna jump right onto the Tormach and start making some chips in this 4140 and see where we get to. For those of you new to the channel, if this is the first video you found on the Blades to Be channel, I'd encourage you to get out there and check out some of the videos. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button to help us grow here in 2022. And if you like this video, hey, feed that YouTube algorithm. Put a like, put a comment on there. I'd love to hear from you and love for you to let other people know these videos are worth checking out. For those of you already subscribed to the channel, appreciate you coming back. I hope you like this video. All right, let's go ahead, do a quick recap, and then uh, we'll head over to the Tormach. Let's go. The new front end piece that he's gonna put on the vehicle. So the hub mount's on here, and because when the hub is on here and you've got your brake rotor sticking out, you need to be able to slide this caliper in over top. So that's why we're, end up, we're making a split bracket here so that these two pieces can slide in there around the rotor and get in place and be bolted in there. And this is 3D printed out of plastic right here. So this is the first piece we're gonna make, half inch thick. Then here's the other half that we have to make. So they are going to go together and fit together just like that. All right, just some of the other prep work. Been having this saw running while I've been over here cleaning up some of the pieces and getting them squared off on the mill. So once we get all this done, then we'll get to the CNC, get all this in the Tormach and actually cut out some pieces. So I did all the prep of the stock on my manual mill, just a Jet JMD 18 mill drill. A lot easier for me to go ahead and prep the stock on there instead of trying to program it to do in the Tormach. And that three inch base mill on here really did a nice job of knocking these down to size. Just wanted to square up these pieces a little bit, make sure I could hold them cleanly in the vise. Some of them I faced off in the mill drill and some of the pieces we're gonna face off in the Tormach when we do one side. We're just about ready to get these over to the CNC. I'm actually finishing to the 1.5 thickness because it's just the little tabs that are going to stick up so I'm not going to take an extra facing cut when I get these on the Tormach. So we'll flip this over and we'll take our finished cut on the back side and then we should be finished with our stock prep and ready to go. Well that's a quick recap and catch up on the process so far. So we've got our heat treated 4140 stock prepped. If you watched the other video, we already made a complete prototype model of this out of the aluminum. And now we're ready to get in here and try to cut this heat treated 4140 in the Tormach and see how this is gonna go to make these two parts. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and check it out. All right, it's time to get in here for this 4140 steel instead of the aluminum. We got our first piece set up in here. I've got the jacks on there. Got my program loaded. This one for the facing, I've slowed it down to my low speed here on the Tormach. And I've got my tool brake on. I'll make sure I speed it back up. Put it back in high range after we finish the facing up to go through the rest. This is the fastest of the four operations to make one of these. And also we'll be going through and making two at a time tonight. See how what kind of productivity we can get. And just we'll see how this 4140 is gonna cut. Program is all loaded up. Got all the same tools in there. And like I say, right now I'm in low range to run this at 300 RPM. We'll speed it back up afterwards. Let's see how it cuts this harder material. in there facing that off. So far seems to be cutting pretty well. Yeah, throwing out some nice chips. Just running a lot slower than we were in the aluminum, but that's just kind of what the deal's gonna be. Thank you. 
All right, faced off fine. Got my machine back in high gear. We'll go ahead and get our drilling and everything else done on here. All right, pretty good rate of boring in there at 12 inches per minute. 3,000 RPM, but it seems to be putting out pretty good chips. All right, doesn't seem to be too unhappy with that. Let's see how it does on the finish cut. So it doesn't seem to like the finish cut on those. A little fast, a little heavy. I think I need to go back and make those 10 thou finish cuts instead of the 20 thou we were doing in the aluminum. See if that gets them a little better. I tried slowing the feed down to eight on that finish cut and it was still pretty chattery. chattery. All right, on these big counter sinks, starting out okay here so far. Got that roughed out. Need to get in there to finish those counter sinks. You can see just a little bit of that chatter in there on those board holes. I'm going to go change that a little bit so we're taking a 10 thou finish cut out of those. But overall, not too bad. 21 minute cycle time and just a couple quick ops left. So it actually cut that really nice. I had to slow the feed down to eight. Starting out, it broke the cutter pretty much instantly. It took the tip off of that. 
which unfortunately means I've left a little bit of a lip there, so I need to go fix that. I'm hoping, kind of like a countersink tool, I can tell it to overhang that a little bit off the hole and finish that the rest of the way down there, and I'll still be able to get these two done because I do not have another 82 degree countersink. So let me go see if I can tweak the program a little bit and just refinish those just a tiny bit at the end. And we've got it figured out for where to slow it down for the next one. So good learning. Don't want to slow RPM. That tip on that is just not going fast enough. Couldn't handle the 12 inches of feed that I had going after it, so snap the tip off. Got away with it in the aluminum, but not in the steel. All right, that worked. I was able to just go in there and tell it to go beyond the whole bottom by 30 thou. So it just went ahead and cut the rest of the way down, got rid of the little stepped lip off the bottom. So the counterbores are done. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to reset the tool height on that tool properly. So not sure I'll be able to use it again, but we should be able to get through this project with it. So we're good to go there. All right, let's finish the last couple steps on here and get the other one of these done. Well, with the countersinks done, then it was just a quick wrap up on this piece. Had to go in there and bore those little quarter inch holes for the dowel pins for the alignment that we're going to use to bolt this onto a plate to finish the other half, the other side of these. So I got those bored out, got those reamed, and then just went around and put a quick uh, beveled edge on the top of those board holes that we had in there. And then it was this side ready to go, ready to flip this one over. All right, well, there it is. We got the first one completed. We saved our counterbore tool, so we were able to finish it. We got our last little dowel pin holes in there. Got some little bit of a bevel on the top side of these holes. So I think we're good. Let's knock out the other one. The true challenge is gonna be, when we start doing the, the radius around on these, we'll see how that cut is gonna go. But um, ah, not too bad. I went ahead and slowed it down. We're only gonna take 10 thou on the finish cut, so we should do even better on the second one. All right, we got this big piece in there now. I made sure I've got enough sticking up from the vise. I got the right parallels in there and we should have all the same tools loaded. I just double checked that main tool that we've been using to make sure all that chatter vibration hasn't pulled it out of the holder at all. It was still right on the money for height. So this will be the big test. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna make a lot of chips out of this piece. Let's see how this steel is really gonna do here. Well, we're in there cutting 100 pounds. Well, it's a little chattery with that 3 8 end mill, but we are cutting almost 100 thou deep, 12 inches per minute on feed rate. And we're definitely getting rid of some steel out of here at this point. So let's see how long this cutter is going to hold up and see what we can get accomplished in here. I think we're giving the Tormach a workout today. Well, we're making some progress. That's the second cut down in there. So we're down about 230,000 now. It likes cutting over on that side better. It gets over to this side and it's a lot more chattery and rattly, but it's making its way through. We're gonna do a 20 thou finish cut, so it should leave it in good shape for that last cut, and then we'll see how this side miller is gonna go. Well, we made it through step one. We got a 200 thou worth of material removed out of there. I think originally it was a quarter inch, but I think now it's only 200 thou, so. All right, we got that cleared out of there. We got a decent finish. Let's move on and drill, bore some holes, and then we'll come back and do our around the outer diameter. 
Oaring operation went pretty smooth, a little bit chattery on the finish cut on those holes, but overall it went pretty good. I failed to get the drilling operation on video, but drilling the holes in there, I did have the feed set a little bit too fast on the drill. It got a little bit dull and actually powered out the Z motor on one of the last holes that I was drilling, but pulled that up, sharpened the drill, and was able to finish those off before boring. Not giving me a lot of confidence for the side milling operation with that amount of chatter on 10 pounds. Well, it cut it, it made that first pass, but it's pretty rattly. I don't think I need this thing sitting here doing that much chatter for like an hour going around there. So let me head back up to Fusion and let me go model another tool path to uh, work our way down and get that thing cut out. Let's go see what we can come up with. So this was the original machining strategy that we just tried. Worked great in the aluminum going around doing a multiple step overs to get in there to get rid of all that extra material. Just this heat treated 4140 is not liking these end mills and side milling anywhere close to that kind of depth. Wouldn't even really do it on a 20,000 step over in the bore. Even when I changed that to a 10,000 step over, I was still getting some chatter. Trying to do a 50,000 step over all the way around. We saw what that looked like. Just not sustainable. There's no way we're going to get through there. The Let's take a look at what I came up with as our alternate machining strategy. All right, so here's our same part, and now we're just going to do multiple step downs. So we're going to go down 60 thou in depth, and it's going to come around and it's going to do multiple contours around here. Eventually, for that last contour, it's going to go all the way around. So for this alternate machining strategy, we've got 60 thou step downs. We've got 225 thou step overs. This is the pattern Fusion came up with. Let's get back down on the Tormach and let's see if this is going to work a little bit better for us than that side milling. Let's go check it out. All right, I got a whole new tool path going on here. We'll see what happens with this. I think this is going to work a lot better. Taking little bits, going around. 100 thou deep, 275 step over. And we're going to do some 5 thou finish cuts on the whole length once we get down there. This strategy seems to be working. We're pulling a part out of there. Way less chatter. I don't think my cut time is even that much longer. And we don't get all those sharp little side milling chips stacking up like we did before with the aluminum. So overall, I'd say we hit success. hard to hear me over the machine but you're coming on the last pass we got the outside diameter all cut and now it's time to see if these five thou finish cuts on the edge are going to be able to do it without chatter i wanted to make sure i took some side cuts to clean up that edge from all the step milling to go down there let's see how it can handle it all right here we go with our first of two five thou finish cuts 
seems to be able to handle that without chattering. Wasn't sure what kind of finish I was going to have from all the steps. That's why I went ahead and did two finish cuts around there. Maybe could have got away with just one. Seems to be cut pretty nice. Well, had to totally change the machining strategy for those contours, but it worked. We got the steel to cut, and oh, the time actually wasn't too bad. It took an hour to go around and do all those contours with that new machining path. Not bad. We've got a nice finish on there. I mean, this thing feels good. So that's two out of four of the operations that are done. I think I'm going to go through and I will set up this same contour tool path on the other two operations that need it. And we're going to go ahead and get the rest of these things knocked out. I think we have at least proven that we're going to be able to do this 4140 on the Tormach. A little slower, a little different than doing the aluminum, but we are going to make it work. Well, there's how many chips from just doing three of the eight of these. So pretty decent amount, I'm guessing that's good. Four to five pounds worth of 4140 steel chips in there. Get that cleaned out and we'll see what we can get done this evening. All right, we got the back side of this one in here. I've had to continue to play with the speeds and feeds and the machining pattern a little bit to try to minimize how much chatter I'm getting on these. I've got it down where it's decent now. I'm still gonna get some chatter, but get more often than not, it's not chattering. And Seem to be getting a little better tool life out of it. Got a long ways with the first tool and then the second one I put in there chattered and got a couple chips in it right away. So we're getting there. Definitely got to slow everything down a lot and uh, just keep tweaking that tool path a little bit until you find one that really works in this hardened 4140. Giving the Tormach a good workout. Let's see what we get on this pass. Yeah, this is doing pretty decent. The thicker plate seems to be no problem at all. It's just this thinner plate it wants to kind of lift and bounce a little bit and get a little more chatter, but we're getting them done. All right, this is on the pass all the way around the whole outside diameter. We're about halfway through the part right now. 29 minutes in. So about another 30 minutes or so and we'll have this part complete. And then we'll be ready to move on to the thicker bracket and get that one machined down and contoured. A lot slower going in this 4140 than I thought it was gonna be, but we're getting there, we are making it. Slow and steady progress on this. Coming together. into that last depth so it's just cutting away the, the last bit of that shelf now then we'll make a couple of final laps around some little five thou finish cuts get a nice hopefully a nice finish on that edge little chamfer ready to move on All right, here we go on the final lap around this piece before we do the chamfer. Well, final lap around for a cut, and we'll do the two finish cuts at least. Some of those chips 
chips out of the way before we see how this does on the finish cut. All right, let's see how it does on our side milling. Nice, okay, there's a first five thou cut. It seems to be cutting decent today. It's going to come to finish this pass. It'll come around, do one more 5 thou finish cut, and then the chamfer. Oh, yeah, I think we're going to have a good looking part come out of there. Putting that eighth inch bevel in there. Seems to be cutting that pretty well. treated 4140 got around there I think that finish looks great the bevel looks good on that that took one hour and two minutes to machine that contour around there and the step downs to keep chatter to a minimum with that 3 8 cutter so that's my biggest piece that I've pulled off this Tormach so far. Now let's move on to the even bigger block and let's finish the backside of those. Get a customer out the door and happy. All right, let's keep moving. All right, we're here. We're at the last step in the process. Got that on our jig plate. We're gonna do the backside of this thicker half of the bracket. Get the first one done. Then we'll do a repeat on the second one and we are done. Let's go ahead. I've modified the machining strategy that we figured out that seems to work the best to reduce chatter. So I've got this one all set up with that same concept, significantly different than how we did the aluminum. Seemed to work well on the other piece of 4140, so let's see how it does on this one. All right, so on this half inch end mill, the only chatter I seem to get is when it's going full width of cut, which it's only gonna do on this initial pass through the center. So it was doing a little bit on that V notch there. Oh, actually, coming from the other side, it did great. On this side, when it was doing the full width, it would chatter just for a second. But otherwise, we seem to have a nice smooth cut with that half inch cutter, with the dimensions and everything I've got set up on there. So this is just gonna dig and dig for a little while and machine this whole top section out. We'll let her run. Yeah, here's still the only place I'm getting some chatter on this initial cut where it goes full width. The rest of the op seems to be pretty clean. So just a couple seconds of chatter. Not bad. So it's going to have to only going 60 thou deep at a time, the 250 thou step over. So it's gonna take five passes total to clean this up. Took 15, 16 minutes for that first pass. So looking at about an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes total before we get on to the contouring piece on this. So I think it's gonna take me about, it's a little over three hours total time to machine out the, the backside of these way slower than what we were cranking out that loom. All right, 
right, we are three cuts into it. So this is gonna go start the fourth cut. This will be the last cut at depth, and then it's gonna go take a 20 thou finish cut off here. And then it's gonna move on to pulling out that contour and get rid of the other couple pounds of material off of here. So far, continuing to run well. All right, here we go. We got that last pass around these bosses done. It's just going around there and then it's going to come in for its finish cut into that corner. We are an hour and 24 minutes in. So an hour and 24 minutes total. Here we go on that last little finish cut pass around there. why it does such an aggressive feed in on those cuts. This cutter definitely held up well for me. Hopefully we can get the other piece done with this same cutter. Take a quick look before we uh, cut around those radiuses. There we go, the first step on this one is complete. Now the finish on that turned out really nice. Looking good down in there on those bosses. They turned out very good. Finish feels good on there. So it's gonna grab uh, 243, so I believe our next step is we're gonna go around and do all these contours around the outside, get rid of that material. Uh, and then it's going to come in and do the radiuses on the boss. So I think we're going to go around the outside here first. Get the other big long step done. Well, the part is emerging. We're getting rid of the last of it here. This is the last pass around. Then it'll do its couple five thou cuts just to clean up the edge, blend them in a little bit. Didn't mean to leave it quite so thin here. But I forgot that the passes overlap. So looking at the simulation, I thought I was taking even cuts all the way down. But because they overlap by 50 thou, 25 each side. A little thin on this last cut, but it's actually cutting it nicely. It's not rattling around, so gonna work. I don't think I'll need to change that when I cut the second one. Even just these little five thou radio cuts, boy, it just does not like it in this 4140. These end mills clearly are not the ones designed for heavy radio cuts. This one's a little cleaner. I was getting a little more chatter the first time around. It just went in for the last five thou. I've been kind of tweaking, playing with the feed and the speed a little bit, trying to get it nice and clean. So. That's not bad. A little bit of fine chatter here and there. Almost ready for the next step. Oh, uh, there we go. Ready to move on. You can just see that little bit of a line, you know, just barely a bit of a step there as it met from one side to the other. But that is pretty clean. I will take that for flipping this piece over and just using some reamed holes and dowel pins to line it up. Definitely gives us what we need. All right, some radiuses. 
some bevels, cut that contour on the front, nearly there. That took another hour to go around and do that set of contours, so we're two and a half hours in so far. Two hours and 26 minutes. it's cutting around that boss and the radius pretty good I slowed the feed down to 9.7 inches per minute from the 15 I had it set it's chattering when it goes around that whole spot on the back but it seems to be cutting pretty well I think the 9 just seemed a little better I know it's gonna wrap it over for that last 20 thou finish cut so hopefully this quarter inch end mill can handle that well enough how that goes here in a second. Here we go. Oh, nice. I moved over there and took it like a champ. Okay, there's one done. Let's move on to the other one here. That seems to be working all right. Cutting that big bevel on there, this is the second time around. Pretty sure it still has to take a third cut, so that's a lot of surface area. I'm feeding it pretty slow, I may have to slow it down even more. We'll see how it does on this third cut. Continue giving this Tormach a good workout. Happy with how it's performing. It's a pretty big chunk of steel in there we're dealing with, and it's handling it.
last step in the process here. We're just gonna do these step downs, get this last big chamfer on the front end of this, quarter inch ball nose, stepping down 10 thou. Turned out great in the aluminum. Sounds like it is cutting nice in this 4140 as well, so. Tormach did it. Boy, I was struggling a little bit through some of these, finding the right tool path that was making it happy. I think we got there. So I've got one piece left to finish, and this project is done. Well, there it is. The big thick steel one is complete. Again, you can, there you go. Kind of see that seam over there a little bit now on the left. You can definitely feel it. It's just, just barely there, but I'm happy with that alignment as it lined up both sides. We'll take a look at it when it's out. Those radiuses, that finish turned out nice in there. No problems. There, get a better look at those. That step over feels great. That nice heavy beveled edge, a little step down on the front. Super happy with how that turned out. All right, I've got about three hours of machining to get the other one done and then tap these holes in both of them and this project is done. So I'll wait until I get all that done and we'll do a quick wrap up on this video, but man, I learned a ton on this one, doing a big steel project in the Tormach. Hope y'all got something out of this so far. Great little project. Here's some pics of those finished parts. You can see what the uh, 4140 looks like. That was the aluminum one back there in the, the back side. But fit together nicely. Really happy with the finish. You can see how these all go together on the rest of the front end parts for the vehicle. This next pick coming up here, you can just see a little bit of that hub that I finished for the customer last year. Got another shot of it there in this other pick. And now that he's got the hubs and the brackets, he should have everything he needs to get this truck back together. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop as we completed this project. Wow, not without some challenges. I mean, I learned so much going through here. I mean, I did a prototype in aluminum, thought I had a pretty good machining process going on, but uh, yeah, that wasn't even working at all in this heat-treated 4140, but gotta love Fusion 360. Was able to go up there and just continue, make adjustments, make tweaks, find something that worked for the horsepower of my Tormach, the tooling that I had on hand, and came up with a machining strategy that we were able to get these done. And again, really happy with how these heat treated 4140 parts turned out. Uh, actually, you know, don't have a lot of chatter marks on them or anything. So ultimately came up with a machining strategy that worked and put out for me, these are truly the largest, biggest parts I put out on my Tormach. Made about, I don't know, probably five, six pounds of chips per piece. So, uh, you know, I know when I took out the trash bag, it felt like I had about 25 pounds worth of 4140 chips in there. So good workout for my Tormach. And again, ultimately really happy with how these parts turned out. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned as much as I did going through here. And I uh, look forward to having you come back and join for future videos. If this is the first video you've seen on the blades to be channel, I'd encourage you to go check out some of the other videos on here on machining, welding, Fusion 360, knife making, just everything else going on here in the blades to be shop. 
If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hey, drop a like, drop a comment on there. Let other folks know these videos are worth checking out. My subscribers on the channel, as always, I appreciate you coming back to watch these videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time, I hope you are out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. Maybe you're doing some cool prototyping like we got to do here in the shop this week, making this custom bracket. I'll be here working on that next video. I still have Blade Show in Atlanta coming up here in a few weeks, so I'm going to be working on getting some knives done and finished. And out for that, I will see what I can pull together for a pretty cool video. I've got a 5C collet stop that uh, I'm going to use to make some knife parts, so I'll do a review on that and uh, show you how a 5C collet stop works. That's probably going to be the next video out. So until I get that one complete, hey, y'all take care.